when we talk about a net zero transition, what we're really looking for is how do we transform the built environment so that it adds no more carbon to the atmosphere? We have to think about both operational carbon of our built environment, but also, and perhaps the trickier one, is the embodied carbon that goes into constructing our buildings. So when we look at issues of the transition, I think it's important to look at two things. The first is about the impacts of our journey toward net zero. And those impacts might look like economies and jobs changing. It might also look like the realities of climate change disproportionately affecting certain communities or areas of our built environment. And then on the opportunity side, we're going to be shifting and transitioning our economy toward net zero applications that will create radical opportunity and innovation for some sectors. The question in terms of making it just is how do you help all stakeholders participate in that transition? So at today's event on the just transition to net zero, we're going to be featuring a speaker from Repowering London. And Repowering London really puts together a community and place-based approach to net zero. They've installed solar racks on the roof and built a community around both harvesting and selling the renewable energy that comes from that investment. I think it's those kinds of community engagement and place-based solutions that give us the most sustainable path toward a net zero uh, target that is still just and inclusive. We're always seeking the opportunity to bring a labor and skills perspective to the technology innovation. And I think by putting those two things together, it's the people and the technology uh, in equal measure that really helps drive the justness of that transition. Always about inclusion, always about participation.